I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today it is October let's see, 22nd, 2019. And this is my first live stream I'm attempting, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, now, I'm in, this, in this one, I'll be teaching, I'm going to try to do a class. So I'll be doing Open SCAD, and I'm trying to do a taco holder. So my wife wanted a taco holder, so I came up with some designs, and here's a copy of what I've written in my little notebook here so far. And so my idea is this would be pretty easy and simple and good to do an open SCAD. Pretty simple design. The idea is you just extrude it, draw it down, and extrude it up like that. Uh, but also there might be some variables you to do to adjust kind of how wide you want it and how the angles are. So I thought that may be a good thing for open SCAD. Um, but the real, aside from just doing this video, which I might end up redoing, um, my reason for uh, attempting to do this is I want to do some live streams because I think it might be a good interaction and it might be a lot of fun. So if anyone's out there watching, and well, I'm, this is my first time doing one, so I'm trying to figure out the tools, um, speak up and say hi. Because I'm thinking what might be a really useful thing for, uh, well, it might be useful in general, but the near-term thing I want to do is I have a Prusa Mini coming. Uh, not officially yet because I've done all their pre-orders and I don't know, no one knows when they're going to be shipping them out. Um, but I'm thinking from what else, it should be well before Christmas. So hopefully um, late November, early December time frame. And I think that would be a great thing to do some live streams on. So I want to do a few tests, a few live streams before then to kind of get my feet wet, understand what's going on. And then from there, hopefully do some. Because boy, I think it's, I think that might be another game changer from Prusa. If they can make an affordable $350 printer, uh, and from my perspective, trying to appeal to the homeschoolers, that's huge. I mean, I have a lot of homeschoolers here that I talk to a lot. Um, and the ones who the ones who we talk to on a regular basis, who are friends of ours, um, not one of them has bought a printer yet because $750 is a little bit of a commitment. Um, it's not too bad for what you're getting, but still, it's a little bit. But then when I mentioned the $350 price, um, one person who I would say wouldn't wouldn't be the first person to buy it, but maybe the second or third person. She went, oh, and she said, tell me about it. So maybe you know, three fifty. That's a big. You know, I think that's gonna if it's. But I want it to be good. You know, it's got to be a workhorse. It's got to be able to take a little abuse, just like the i three Mark III. But anyway, enough of that excitement. So we'll see. It looks like I have two concurrent viewers. So I'll have to go figure this out. No. Um, so we'll see how things work. And I think I just posted a message. So we'll see how all this goes. But anyway, here's my design. And so I have to go refresh my brain a little bit, open ask catch. This might be a little bit of a slow class, but mostly, like I said again, testing the streaming. Um, so in open SCAD, you can draw something on a two dimensional plane and then extrude it. And so, and also with OpenSCAD, you can have all these variables so you can figure out what you want to do. So you can see I wrote some notes here and I have little dots here. Uh, one thing you can do is you can draw with dots. And so let me, uh, if you're unfamiliar with OpenSCAD, I think it's a great design tool. Uh, it's 3D design as code. And so you can go out there to OpenSCAD.org, it's free, download it. And then you can start to define squares and circles and shapes. And you can do it as code. So if you're familiar with coding, or if you know what someone is, they can probably help you a little bit. Um, it's not too bad, but you can make it more complex. So like as an example here, I'm just looking at this. At, I don't even know what this is. But you can see these little fins here, whatever this, this little model is. So if you get one fin designed, you can say make four and rotate them. So you can make, you don't have to draw every little bit. Plus it'll be very precise and repeatable every single time. Um, and, uh, and a lot of people are using it. So if you go out and look at, as an example, if you look at um, Prusa, all his 3D printed parts are in Open SCAD. Uh, that way he can tweak them and change them and keep the history of them so he doesn't have to go through some other third party tool or as much as I like Fusion 360, there's a lot of things it's not designed for. And this is perfect for some things. For some other things, it's more cumbersome. But also with this, you know, you're not dependent on Fusion 360. This, if I design to them this because it's open source, and it's just code at the end of the day, it will work 20 years from now. Like uh, Fusion 360, love it, but will Fusion 360 be surpassed someday 
uh, by something else several years ago, and you have to go learn a new tool. Well, this code should be working just fine for the next 50 years. Okay, um, with that, cheat sheet. There's an openscad.org cheat sheet. So gonna, I'm going to use a lot of this because I haven't even prepped for this. So I'll just be fiddling around and seeing what I can do and making functions and referring back to my other OpenSCAD stuff. So first of all, I think this is going to be mostly a simple design. So if I look uh, again, you can, you see how I do these dots. You can make squares, you can make shape, you can make circles, and they have things like that. Or you can divine, see I'm trying to remember my brain, polygons. I think it's a polygon. So you can sit there and make a multi-point polygon, define where those points are, and then boom, make something. So let me go see if I've, let me open up a bunch of my OpenSCAD files. Do I have anything that's a polygon in my brain? Um, what is that one? Nope, cylinder, cylinder, cylinder. Well, oh, we'll get started. So we'll go an empty one here. And we'll go over here to, to 2D. So we're going to make a 2D. And then we'll extrude it. So we'll start with a 2D. And so there's the polygon, polygon of the paths. We're going to make this kind of square. So we'll choose, I'll open just the polygon one. So I can click on that. I'll right click on that, open it up. And it'll tell me how the polygon works. So I can give it a bunch of points, you know, x, y, x, y, x, y. And the nice thing, they, they tell you what it is, and then they show some examples. You know, here's a polygon, and it goes do, 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 do. And if I remember correctly, let's see if we can read this again. If I recall correctly, it follows the path around. So it's like connect the dots, do, 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 which works really well with what we're doing. So what we'll do here is we'll just make, let's start simple. We'll just copy and paste this. So we'll copy this first one, which should be creating something at 0, 0, 100, 0, 130, 50, 30, 50. And so we'll just sit here and paste that in. And so that's our first bit of code. This says, hey, make a polygon, and the polygon's going to have these points. Uh, 0, 0, 100, 0, 130, 50, et cetera. And then to end, and, and depending on what coding language you're using, a lot of time you want to say, hey, end this line. I'm done with this command. Stop it. And a lot of coding languages out there will use a semicolon. You need that. If I don't put that in here, it says, hey, I don't know if I'm done with this command. I'm not certain. Because I can do this. I can say, hey, because it might be more convenient to read. Let me go the full. It might be more convenient to read in some cases just to put it on multiple lines. And so that's one reason it just makes it, well, when you're trying to write languages, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, there it is. Now up here, there's a couple things you can do. You can preview. Um, now preview, we'll try to render it over here. To re preview renders faster, but sometimes it makes mistakes. So I've gotten in the habit of not using it because of some of the times I'm doing something more complex and it work very well. Um, so I typically just am hitting render, which is your final thing. So I'll hit render here, and we can see. Okay, I got a little noise. That means someone popped on. Cool. So here I, I can um, click with my mouse button, and I can pivot this thing around. I can also, let's see, hit my right key. My left key, I can pivot. Right key, I can move it around. And you can see there's a the number, so you can see it's 0, 0, uh, 100, 0, and it goes up to 130, 50, and then back to 30, 50, and then connects back. Uh, so I can fiddle with some of these. I could do 0, and we should see that. Oh, I got some delivered. If I, if I uh, hit this again, we can see, see how it goes back. There we go. Uh, so it's nice to fiddle with all those things. Another thing, um, we're not doing 3D yet, so I don't really need this yet. But I'll pull one of my other ones up. There's this FN number. Oh, excuse me for a second. I'm printing something, so I'm going to take this off and put another one as I crash things. Oh, another reason I need another printer or two, just, uh, oh, Osloy. I, oh, Osloy, one of my, I'm horrible with names, but there's a couple people I remember because they post, and they post interesting things, and Osloy, you are one of them. <laughs> and, and also it's OpenSCAD, so you're the OpenSCAD guy. 
Um, hi. Yeah, <laughs> and another thing, I think um, I keep trying to recommend all these. Oh, these uh, all the homeschoolers I, I see. And this, I, I use homeschoolers because, hey, that's where I'm from, emphasizing homeschoolers. But for regular kids, I think there's three great tools to uh, do design and to learn a lot of stuff. And Fusion 360 is one. Um, uh, Tinkercad is another one, but that's more aimed for younger kids. It's all on, on our website. It's really cool. Uh, but the third one, which I think is, I don't think every kid might need to learn it, but it, it's really valuable. It's Open SCAD because you're, you're designing this code. It's really simple, but it can become really complex too. So it can really introduce kids into some aspects of programming. Um, and with programming, you want to start simple. So there's a lot of high end level stuff that just is not in Open SCAD and, and shouldn't be. Uh, but a lot of the regular normal stuff is in there. Life is good. I think it's really great. Um, what else do I want to say about it? Open SCAD is great. Uh, but also mathematically, like there's like I consider myself a when you get around super math nerds, like most normal people would consider me a math nerd. But then I look at real math nerds, I'm like, no, I'm not a math nerd. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a math nerd, you know. And you know, I, I have an engineering degree, so I do a lot of calculus and, and stuff and whatnot. I know some math, but there's some. There, this is very much a math nerd thing too. So there's all there's some th aspects in here that I have to like go look up. Like um, whenever they do anything, it's not like there are some 3D rendering packages out there, like Fusion 360, where they're trying to get the job done. And so they might do this or that to make things that are perfectly accurate, perfectly fine but might not be mathematically perfect because I know if they do it mathematically perfect, it's going to take too much time. Where this, I think they more focus on mathematically perfect, and so it takes some more time to render complex things, but they're also very much mathematically, you know, they're talking about unions, difference, intersections, they have, I had to go look at one thing, Hull, which is a, was a cool tool I did on something, it's been a while, uh, but it's a, it's a mathematical term, it's not just, hey, this is a convenient thing to get something done, it's actually a super math nerd kind of thing. Okay, uh, now that I went off on all that. Block SCAD, block SCAD feature, it's like open scan, but block cutting like scratch. Ooh, I'll have to go check that out. Um, yeah, I was always commenting, you might also want to check out block block SCAD. I'm, gu I'm guessing it's block SCAD for teaching. It's like open SCAD, but block coding. Hmm. I can see as we get, um, I can see a lot more of this kind of design work going on because as we get a reliable, if the Open SCAD is, re if the Open SCAD, if the Prusa Mini is reliable and we get our first really reliable workhorse for under 400 bucks, you know, now a class could justify buying 10 of those versus, and being able to use them. And we're getting better tools to use them. Like right now, even by in the last five years, if you get some uh, printer, a good one was going to cost a lot of money, be hard to use, and then it's um, it gets stuck in a corner and let one expert using it. Versus, if if it's if it gets cheaper, if it gets simpler, it's going to be a lot more accessible. Oh, oh, I've been wondering about corner She she makes puppies. <laughs> oh, okay. Also, coming again. Better for younger students who don't yet know how to type. And I have a first grader who's been learning about coordinates using it. Oh, she makes puppies and horses and cats with it. Oh, so maybe like in a, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm guessing maybe like open, I mean, sorry, block SCAD might be equivalent in my mind to like Tinkercad, like more focused, more focused on making something for a younger crowd. That could be a good thing to go for me to look up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the reliable and use of use of the mini that lives up to expectations makes me consider letting Apier use it more independently. Yeah. Yeah, if it lives up to its expectations. I, I hope so because I trust, you know when you have someone making a good product, you see where they're going, they have this vision. I think Prusa has a great vision. And so I think I think it's gonna be good. Um, I don't think it's gonna be as good for the, as the i3 Mark III because of some of the drive things, because it doesn't have direct drive. But for everything I do, I think it's going to work. I think it's gonna be reliable and in my, um, I hope he gets, he gets to the next level with less repair. 
uh, mine, like I think I, I keep telling people, I work it all the time. And I have to fix it, you know, once every two or three months. Uh, but if they can make a, a, if I can get this mini, and we'll see, if I get this mini and I, I get the same results, let's say I get the same results, I have to fix it once every two or three months, fantastic. But I'm working at 20 hours a day. But if it can get to the point where I can work at six months or a year without working it, that's just a super win. And I'm not saying to be an abusive to it, you know. Yeah, let's repair it. Because, um, I'm, yeah, I was listening. Yeah, let's repair is what I'm looking, hoping for. Uh, yeah, because for the classroom and different things, because we're having a new, I hate to say new, I don't feel yet, sometimes I don't feel like I'm part of the community, the old community, because I've only been here for a few years. But the guys have been, you know, five years ago, it was difficult. These guys were trying to design things. It was the hobbyist. And that's always going to be around. But now they're getting more people who like, I don't, I don't fiddle with my printer. I want it to work. I want to do the design. And so we're going to get a, the next groups coming in more like what I'm aimed at design work, not fiddling with your printer. I just want my printer to do a good job. I'm thankful that there's people who fiddle because they learn cool stuff and they do all kinds of things with it. Um, and they have the next design comes out. And so those guys are great and they're doing their thing. But even beyond me just fiddling, the next next generation will be out here in five years who just, they're gonna, they're not even gonna wanna do design work. Um, they're gonna just push, they just wanna print. And if you have a good reliable printer, that's 300 bucks, 400 bucks, a lot of people can justify that if there's a lot of cool things to print. And so there's gonna be some people who are gonna wanna just, they saw something cool and a decoration for their house or a repair thing. And they just want to push a button. And that's fine. Uh, but definitely just cool for the classroom. Okay, backing up on all this. So FN. So individually, you can't, this is kind of like how many, how, how fine the result is going to be. So I'm not doing anything three-dimensional right now, so it's not taking much juice. Uh, but if I was, maybe I can pull up one of my other ones that might show a little better. Yeah, I can do this. So this one is doing a little bit. So it takes a little bit of juice. But if I, you can go here and see it's pretty smooth. But if I go down here and say, oh, you know what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do 12. It'll render faster, but it'll look more blocky. And so sometimes you just want you're trying to do a position of something. So say, yeah, that's blocky. So that rendered a lot faster. But if I put this up to 120, and I push it, it's gonna render way slower. Uh, so you may wanna fiddle with that. I fiddle with that back and forth. I usually leave it 80 to 100 when up for my final thing, um, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, one thing time I wasn't thinking, I made it low and I needed a circle to put a magnet in. And so I needed a pretty decent circle, but I wanted it to went too low and it did like an octagon and the, 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 the circle magnet wouldn't fit in. So it was kind of funny. But anyway, that's another good aspect. So now we've got this. So we're going to draw all this. And then the next thing, just to show what I'm doing in concept. See, I got this polygon. I keep adding more and more points. Let me do something. So I'll do, rather than ending there, I can end it at uh, negative 10, negative 50, right? Yes. And Oslo just pointed out, he, he pointed this out to me a while ago when I did a print, uh, that you can increase that on an individual item. So you can you can set, this is like setting it for everybody, but on an individual one, you can overwrite it. So most of them you'll see, I don't know, if you look at the cheat sheets, often it'll say, you know, it'll, uh, I think it's the, the convexity. So you can overwrite, no, convexity is something else. But a lot of individual ones, like the circle, you can overwrite it. So if I go, I think actually on every shape you can probably, well, no, the polygon, it wouldn't make any sense because you're a polygon. So why make it finer? You're going do do do. So there's a circle diameter and there you go. So there, so on this, like here's a circle, a size of two, and there's the fineness. So yeah, let me just show that because that's kind of interesting to show. So I will, oh, but before I do that, hey, Steven, the light speed, cool, hey. Um, yeah. Hi, Steve. So this is my first, just to let you know, my first streaming, I'm just doing some testing streaming. 
Uh, I think it might be good to teach, but also I want to kind of get ready for a Prusa Mini is coming my way. Don't know when. We'll see when they start. They haven't even announced when they're going to come. But I think that'd be a cool thing to live stream because I want to know more about it. I think a lot of people do. And so I'm doing some tests here. Okay, so anyway, so here I, I screwed up this code, you can see. So here's the individual points. You got bracket, bracket. But as you can see up here, the whole thing is in a bracket. And I forgot to put the bracket. And so when you're coding, if you're unfamiliar with coding, when you have an error, it's not going to work at all. And it tries typically to highlight where it thinks the problem is. But sometimes debugging is the reason I have a job, because debugging can be difficult. And even the stuff that helps you debug can be imperfect. You might, you might say there's a problem here, and there's really a problem somewhere else. Oh, there you go. You can see I made a boom, boom down there, and it all connects. OK, so let me make a circle so I can talk, show what Oslo was pointing out. Oh, you like my last video? Oh, oh, the last video with the Fusion 360. The Fusion 360 video? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm not going to do some more classes so I can teach some people. Because um, as I learn with anything, yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, it's nice to see, I like to watch other videos where you learn techniques. You may not be doing what that guy is going to design, but you see what he's doing, you go, oh, I didn't know that tool could do that. Or that's the tool that gets that job done. Um, yeah, OpenSK, I don't know if it's above most audiences' heads, but uh, it's not that bad at coding, but it is, I don't think it's, I don't think everyone's going to do it. So, like, I'm focusing on, you know, homeschooling students and whatnot, and if I went to most homeschooling students who are even, let's say, 14 or 15, um, I think I could sell most of them on Fusion 360, and there's a lot of cool stuff about that, but then when it comes to this, I think... The, the, the audience who are going to be who need to who are going to code a little bit, yeah, they'll be all over it. Uh, the math nerds, but I think I would lose half to two thirds of my two thirds of my audience. Yeah, fusion, uh, but they both serve different purposes. And but yeah, I agree. I don't think it's for everybody, but I think it's a valuable school tool. Um, when you're teaching people, you know, this this is a class. You can teach them coding. You don't have to worry about downloading a bunch of Fusion 360. You got it all installed. Just, this is a really simple thing. Um, it has its place. Anyway, so here we're going to draw a circle. Boom, boom, boom. So I'll make a circle. Oh, very tiny. A little tiny circle. Here, I'll just make life simpler. I'll comment this out. Uh, in most coding languages, you have some kind of comment. Two dashes at the front of a line in this, in this language means, hey, the rest of the line is a comment. So I can leave it in there for convenience sake, but now it's not going to be run. So now if I rerun this, there's my little... There's my circle. We'll zoom in. Do you watch? Oh, no. Yeah, different for the graphics. Um, but yeah, I, totally not. Yeah, different tools for different reasons. I mean, oh, it's my hair. My wife's on. Let's see if she pops in here. Okay, so here we got this circle. I'm going to FN of, uh, I like the, come on. I'm doing live videos now. And Oslo is on. She got excited. She likes you, Oslo. She likes. So I'll go here. I'll make this 100. And I'll make this 5. And we'll see. It goes down to, so this one overrides that one. So it's kind of cool. So sometimes uh, there was a thing where I made like a snowman once. And I purposely did this FN number lower because it made it had a different look. It made it more blocky. So it's kind of cool to, sometimes you can use it just, not just to speed things up, but as a tool. Uh, but I think Oslo's point, uh, where I wanted to make something more octagony. Actually, I was doing something, I wanted to make it more octagony. So I could have gone up in here and said, okay, I want it to be like this, and which would make it 12, but then come down here and just overwrite it in just a single one. And so that one would be forced to be a circle, a more like a circle. And that's a really cool, useful idea. Okay, so now, and I guess in this case, 
for what I'm doing, I'm doing pretty much just straight lines. This FN number is really kind of <laughs> meaningless. Uh, you don't even have to put it there. There's a default. I forget what the default is. Like, I have to go look it up. The defaults, it's got to be like 40 or 50. There's, there's a default. So if you don't put it, you actually get it. So I will put this thing back. Okay, but now back to my little cheat sheet here. So I wrote uh, some numbers here. So I wrote this height of nine. You can see these little dots here. And so I was going to try to do these dots. But in re reality, um, not only I, I can I could just do these dots. I could figure out what they should be relative to space. But I want to also make them variable so I can change it real quickly. So I like to have my little calipers out so I can kind of get an eye. I use them a lot just to kind of get an idea on how big, you know, I want a taco. I haven't even looked up how big a taco is. I just kind of know in my brain. So we'll start with a, probably a 60 for height. So you see this height here where I wrote, in this case, I'm using this paper, so it's nine dots. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, from there to there. Uh, I'm just trying to get a relative size. Um, also, in OpenSCAD and also in STL files, they don't, they're unitless. So it says nine. Nine what? It's not nine inches, nine millimeters, it's just, it's just nine. Um, but as it turns out, if I do nine in OpenSCAD, and then I also turn into an STL file, the STL file is unitless. But when I bring that into a um, slicer, at least in, at least for Prusa, I'm not familiar with other slicers, um, uh, it's kind of one to one. So a nine means, as when all said and done, ends up being millimeters. Yeah, different tools for different purposes. Yeah, because uh, I can see exactly why, you know, Prusa, I think a lot of his, uh, talking about OpenSCAD versus Diffusion 360 and other things, I can see why uh, Prusa has, you know, all the little 3D printed parts. So he's designed those in OpenSCAD. You go download the files. And I can see why he did it. It would probably be, if you're going to do it once, it's a lot easier to probably do it in Diffusion 360 at first. But if you're going to do it and you want to tweak it, you're like, I don't know, I want to put like one millimeter here and two millimeters here and kind of fiddle with these variables and do it. Then it becomes a lot easier to do an open SCAD. And also it becomes a lot easier because it's just code and it's a lot more repeatable. So it fits, it fits perfectly for some things like, uh, like, like the other day I was doing, I did a video on this. So I have this, uh, work side of video. So I think I, I'll be weird. Let's see if I can. Grab my camera real quick. I have a delay here, but up in my office, I'm gonna go click on. In my office, I have some HTML. So that says end work, basically. And on the other side, I have begin work, because it's my office. Um, and that, I could have done it in Fusion 360. You could put text in there and pull it up easily enough. But in here, it becomes just cake. You know, because I can come in here and, and tweak these words. This, this is the code. This is a couple of lines of code. It's not much at all. Uh, really easy to do and easy to tweak for what I needed that to be. So it'd actually be, this would actually be harder to do in Fusion 360, to be honest. Not very difficult, but a little harder. This is turning into a horrible class, but it's fun to talk to you guys. I probably have to go redo this and make it a shorter video because this will stretch on and on. Okay, so looking at that, I'm thinking that H needs to be 60. Let me zoom in. So I'll have this height. So I can start using variables. So I'll say a height, and I'll say 60. So I'll say height equals 60. Remember the semicolon. And I'll say, you know, I got this width down here. I got these different widths that I want to do. And so that's the equivalent of 9. Let me put some notes in here. I'll say on my paper, it's not, it's nine. I have different kinds of widths. Oh, what am I making? Oh, sorry. To go back to the beginning. Uh, I can see me redoing this. A giant W. <laughs> no, it's actually my wife requested a taco holder. And so I thought this would be a cool one to do in Fusion 360 because it's pretty simple. 
you kind of do a drawing like this, and then in Fusion, then in, did I say Fusion? In OpenSCAD, you design OpenSCAD, and then you can extrude it linearly. <laughs> yeah, this could be interesting. A few more people show up. No, I'm, you know, the day I get a, if I, the day I get a Prusa Mini, I think I get a lot of people to show up because a lot of people will have questions on that. Did someone say tacos? I did say tacos. So I'm, I'm making a taco holder. Okay, and see, so here I can variables because here. I drew this, you know, and that might be the perfect proportions for a tackle holder, but I'm not certain. You know, I want to have a little wide base here. Maybe it shouldn't be three, it should be two. So I should make some variables here. So it's raining, it's raining taco. I, I know that, that song is hilarious. My kids have that. Sometimes I annoy them and play it for them. I know I don't buy much music, but like I bought that on Amazon Alexa just so I could run by Alexa and tell her to play Rain Tacos. And my kids, I think they still think it's a little hilarious, but they kind of roll their eyes now. But it was their song. So, Okay, so here, here we have a height, which I wrote down here as 9 roughly. And over here, uh, we can have this guy, which will be, I don't know, I want to say that. Now we can say that. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, seven and a half. We get that lower. We get this lower width and higher width. And he has a little extra width. So we can say, you know, width top equals. I'm not going to know what it is right now, but I know over here I wrote something. Let's see. And I'll say width bottom. And that way I can make them. These question marks, they don't mean anything. This is just me putting notes in here. Oh, right here, and I just, I can put comments in the same line. So, I ever use a Delta printer? No, uh, I've only used, this is my only printer to read at. So, uh, I kind of was busy with life and different things when all the 3D printing was going out. Although eons ago, when the 3D printing was starting at an industrial level, I almost got a chance to work with some of the very first ones that were like 40, 50 grand, but then I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> but they were really cool and really expensive. But yeah, this is my only experience and I've been pretty pleasantly surprised uh, with it and where they're going. And also I like where Proust is heading, you know, I think you realize like a lot of people, this is, the aim is the microwave oven where like everyone just has one and they just work. Uh, there's always going to be people fiddling and doing cool things and trying to make bigger printers and this and that and different things, but um, I think eventually, I don't know, every single school is going to have a lab eventually, definitely, and maybe every single person. Hypercute Evo. <laughs> Deltas are amazing. Yeah, and there's stuff that are geeky, like for, you know, um, I'm a computer guy, right? So I like building my own computers. But that's not for everybody. So like if I have, I'm busy, I got a job, I got a family going on. But if I, uh, several years from now, when my kids leave the nest, I could totally see, I could see myself taking some time and building a printer because it's kind of cool project. But otherwise, I don't really have the time right now. Um, oh, the deltas, those ones that have a little, those are the design where they come down with the three things and move things around, because with that, those are cool. They're chatting back and forth. My wife hop, hops in with them. I am totally, I'm talking with my wife now, I'm totally not getting this job done, we are, but we're chatting back and forth. So the actual purpose for this video is not happening, but it's okay. Well, the main purpose is to. purpose, not yours. Uh, Proust only took eight hours. Yeah, I don't. What are you tweaking it? What is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's totally fun to tweak. I could see myself making like a big, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes like it's fun to tweak, sometimes it's not. Depends on what you want to do. Uh, one complaint I heard when I was at the, when I was at the homeschool conference this last summer, there was a couple people who had printers. Everyone who had a cheap printer, you know, $400 under, were, were amazed at how fast this was compared to theirs and how accurate. Um, I don't have any time for this either. All right, all right. 
but since you already have it, I got there, but I try X and X. Yeah, exactly. I, I, you're right. I could, I was like, I count off the grids, but I counted up. I need to relatively size this. So I'm sorry. Now back to what I'm doing. So right now here, I got the height and I got this, I'm going to make this width variable at the top and the width variable at the bottom. And so, yeah, I got the dots. So I'm going to count it. So I have, you know, 2.5 and 1.5 as a start. And so let me say 2.5. And 1.5. And you can see I put, you can put comments at the inner line. Now, the reason I did this is I, I, when I did this drawing, you know, let's say this, let's say this drawing is accurate, but really it's close to what I really need. Um, but now I need to convert that because I'm not going to make it nine millimeters tall. That'd be tiny. Uh, I just kind of measured off and I said, I just wrote 60. So let me go, let me do some little math here. Um, so I can say 60 divided by 9, you know, 6.66 times. So I can just say 6.6 .6 times 2.5. So 16 and a half for this one, roughly. 6.6 uh, .6 .6 times 1.5 is 9.9. .9, so we'll just call that 10 for now. And that'll be roughly equivalent to what I wrote down there. Um, but also in here, you know, I can do math. So like, Technically, if I wanted to be super accurate compared to my drawing, you know, that 9 to 2.5. So I could say, uh, let's see, I guess I could say, what I would want to say is, I'll just do the math here in my head, 2.5 divided by 9, right? That gets you that ratio uh, times 60, which is what I just did, right? Make sure my brain's right. 2.5 times 60 divided by 9 is 16.66. So I did that, but I could also come in here and say, you know what, I'm going to be lazy. I don't want to even bother doing that. I could say, I could just do this, and it would do the calculation for me. Yep, I was always on there. Oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah, you could schedule it. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I was always right. Let me know. Close the door here before too many noises come in. Uh, one thing you can do, that's the nice thing about coding this up, is you can come in down here and you could, like you could say, you could scale it. So I can go, I'll do that here as an example because you made that point. So I go, uh, let me see, scale, scale. So there's another tool, scale, another function. Uh, I'm going to scale x, y, yep, 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 yep. scale, do scale, I can do, has transformation, so I should write x, y, z, well, I guess it does all three, huh, yeah. Let's see what I was, what I was writing. At scale, uh, inches. Oh, that's kind of cool. Millimeter tensions. Let's see if I can do this right. That's within a translate. Do I have to translate and scale, or can scale just be used by itself? Well, I guess I'll find out. Yeah. Uh, we got x and y, which I don't care. Let me say two and two and z doesn't count. It's like, well, yep, that works. Uh, that's another nice thing is if I I could do a bunch of drawings, I could say draw this, draw this, draw this, draw this, and then he, I can wrap a scale around it. So this says, hey, scale this, and you can see I change the size. So I scale this in x, y, and z. So I can say one one, which which should get me back to the same. There's my regular size. I could say, hey, you know what? I just want it five times bigger. Just cool things you could do like that. Don't have to translate. Yeah, you don't have to translate. Okay, cool. The other thing is you test things out and see if you can get them done. Okay, so with that, I have my little variables up here that I'm going to tweak. Uh, also, on Fusion 360, in Fusion 360, when you're doing stuff, you can do math inside those measurements. So when you put the measurement in, you can say five divided by two, and it'll do the calculation for you. But 
360, that's a cool thing. Okay, so now we've got this with. Oh, got something else done. Trying to use the last bit of this filament, as well as make a bunch of 3D printed carabiners for next summer's contest. Okay. So there we go. So now let me get my brain in gear. So we're going to want a polygon, and we're going to want a polygon with the variables. And so, do, do, do. and so we'll start here. So we'll say, do, do. and then we want, uh, you could probably make a relative width in there. So I could make a, I'll just call it, maybe I'll call it thickness. Thickness equals, yeah, we'll say two millimeters. Now it's not really two millimeters, but like I said, it kind of ends up being that for convenience sake. Uh, because OpenSCAD is unitless and STL fibers are unitless, but when we put those in the slicer, uh, a, a unit of two ends up being two millimeters, so that's very convenient for our purposes. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll go, we have the height, and the height what we'll do is we'll go to the very top. So let's see, polygon points, make a new one here, and I'll comment this section out. And so we'll start building up these points. So sometimes I like doing this where I split everything up. And so I'll say zero, I'll just say zero, zero, and I'll say one, one. one, one, one. I'll just get something doing something. And we'll end it. I mean, that could all be on one line, but I like to split things up sometimes. What did I do? I kind of made a straight line, didn't I? Mm. There we go. There we go. Something I at least can see there. Okay, so we'll start with this first part. Part We want the height. We'll consider this the bottom. So I want this first one to be what well, we're considering the first height and a zero. So we'll say uh, zero x and we'll use the variable height. All right, so we'll use that 60. So I have that 60. And the next one, we'll do the next point over, which is going to be this guy right here. And so what he's going to be is we have this width at the top, right? And then we have this little section over here. What do we want to do with that? We didn't really give it a full width. Uh, I guess we need a full width. You can say what the full width is. And the full width will be to the midpoint, right? So let's say, so I have three widths we can track. Width, width, full, equals, and I'll look at the relative size. Oh, height equal. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like it when I type that. I don't know why sometimes it's height hates me. Uh, that's also a good example. Line 11. I love you guys, Oswald. That's a good example of uh, pair programming. Where I work, and I try to convince people of, is the value of pair programming, where you have two people work on one project at the same time. And one thing that's probably easy to do in a forum like this, where we're millions of miles away, and you guys all only can do is type to me. Um, it's hard to do when you're close up because people might take, you have to learn not to take offense. But like you pointed out that I misspelled something, which is perfect. That's really helpful. But some people get offended. It's like, ah, because I did something, I misspelled height. That's kind of dumb. Um, but it's, people do stuff like all the time. Or I'll, I'll, I'll miss a call on, and you guys just save me a bunch of headache trying to figure out what I did wrong, right? So pair programming, yay. Something good to teach kids, right? Okay, so now we have this full width, and the full width, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half relative. So I'll say 5.5, and what was that calculation? 6.6, .6, wasn't it? So 6.6 .6 times 5.5 gets us 36. So we'll just put 30, 36 down there for now. 
out in the Bay Area. Where are you roughly? I'm in Denver. Um, and if you're familiar with, you know, like, you know, if you're in California, the Bay Area, you said the Bay Area, the Bay Area is huge. I mean, not being from the Bay Area, I get where you're at, right? Uh, so where I say I'm from Denver, most people get that I'm, get where I'm at. The Denver Airport, yeah, they have a layover here once. Yeah, Denver Airport is a pretty nice spot. They got a pretty, we have a huge airport. And so technically I'm in Denver Metro, but actually I'm in Aurora, which is one of the many cities surrounding Denver. Um, and I've lived here off and on different places, and I've lived in Colorado for the last 20 ish years, I guess 19 years. Um, lived in Aurora. Never lived in Denver technically. Lived up, I lived up near Boulder, a place called Superior. Uh, lots of nice stuff here. Uh, in fact, I was I wasn't going to move to the Bay Area, but after college, I was going to. I worked in Northern California in Sacramento, and so I was going to move to Sacramento. But then something occurred. I had a friend move here, and I kind of liked it, so I ended up moving here. Okay, so there's the withful. Oh, I just messed thickness up. How about I type in the right place, right? 2.5, and that thickness is just a thickness that will adjust later on. It has nothing to do with anything. I like Sacramento. I, I thought it was a fun place. I worked a couple of summers there. It was good. Okay, so let me go look at my design over here. I'll just shrink this. Come on, man. Work with me. Smaller. There we go. So we have, so for that first part, we have that point, which is zero in height. The next point is going to be, uh, it'll be the height level. So we're going to have to do this. You know, for now, I'll put zero, zero at the end to kind of we can make sure we're doing something. And then this one is going to be the width with full minus. Uh, the width top. So we're doing a little calculation there because we intended that to be that, so that should get us that point. And now I have an error. Oh, look right there. See, luckily that did a good job. It highlighted that right there, and you can see I forgot to comment that out because that's meaningless information and messes up the line. There we go. Sacramento. Yeah, we knew what you were saying. Okay. So, so I can see there's those two lines. So there we go. There's the two. That's working like I intended to. Then it's coming back down to the zero zero point just to make sure I'm doing that. So stop doing it. So now the next line is going to be down here. And so the next line, I'm going to use the width. So uh, the height is going to be easy. Uh, in fact, let me keep making it. Uh, I'll leave that zero zero. I'll leave the zero zero there. And here, uh, I don't know what that's going to be yet in my brain, but the, this is going to be the thickness because this next line is going to be this point right here. And it's that thickness above the bottom. And then over, I'm going to be, ah, and this is the lower lower width. So it's going to be the full width minus the lower width. There we go. So I will do width. My wife's staring at me now. You can come say hi. They can. Ah, my friend. Let me fix this real quick. Are you done or no? No, we're still. I can be done. Oh, no, that's okay. Let's go over one here. Ugh, mess that up. Um, here's one thing I like for my 3D print. Uh, this is one of those, you know, everyone's always figuring stuff out. Luckily, I avoided all. Oh, oh hi, Mrs. IQ. I was always so. <laughs> She's also my camera lady and my inspiration, and also says, you're going too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten better over the years. Like right now, I think I'm talking at a pretty decent pace. Um, but I do 
but I'm very excitable. And I can just go, do, 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 you know. Um, so she goes, chill out. Or, or sometimes you get too close to something. Now you can read everything over here. He's, they're always typing. Uh, sometimes you get too excitable about, or you know too something about something, so you, you forget other people don't know what you know. You get so deep into something, you're like, oh, yeah, I just do all these codings, you know, like, and you forget these things, which I'm trying not to do that. Like, I'm trying to talk, now I'm trying to talk to an audience who are new people. Oh, she's waving her hand. Yeah, you get a little, that's a little delayed, but over here you can see yourself a little quicker. <laughs> you broke. I'm trying to figure all these streaming tools out. Um... Uh, so I, she helps me focus a little bit on this because with, with this, I plan to always continually talk to new people. Uh, maybe I'll do a video here that might be a little bit, that's me waving. Oh, he waved, that's his waving icon. Say oh. something. Say something. Well, that's, 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 that's what I want to type. Oh. I'm talking, they can hear me. Sometimes I type some stuff in there. Um, well, that's Oslo. Yeah, that's what I said. Hi, Oslo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as when you're focusing on new people, like if you've been coding a long time and you know what coders is, you don't even have to say semicolon. People see that, they know the language has semicolon and they're done. But I'm talking to people who have probably never coded before and so I have to explain the semicolon means the end of the line, things like that. So my wife reminds me to teach at an appropriate level. Okay, anyway, I need to go fix this print. So one thing I've been using lately uh, that works really well. At, at first, I was um, being new. And by, you know, a year ago, I was new. So I was trying to figure out what all this meant. So I didn't realize that the plate that Prusa had given you actually... Oh, hi to both of you. I was another tab. Oh, he says hi. Greg Maker's Corner. Greg's Maker's Corner says hi. Hi. Um, when I first got the printer, I was trying to figure out what was going on. And one thing I didn't realize is the problem people had worked on for years and years and years was trying to get that first level adhesion working. And they had come up, the latest thing they come up with, and also to get stuff off, was Prusa has this plate. And I didn't realize the plate was actually coated with plastic. And so the plate is coated with a plastic that I believe is used in the same plastic used in, is in French, as in the McDonald's French fry bins or something that they use in the back. Is what I understand and as a result it helps to get that little bit of adhesion and life is good oh pei there he goes that's the word pei uh and so it works pretty well um and also it's like a sacrificial thing so over time your bed will wear out and you have to get a replacement um but i like the idea of not having to do anything special like just having to push a button and go we're not Quite there, maybe they'll get something better. Oh, because I got the glue stick. But uh, so at one point, I don't mind sacrificing some time. So at one point, I was running the first layer super, super slow, like a third speed, because that tended to help when I was doing something complex. And the texture PI is much better. Uh, and so I was willing to go slower, knowing that I didn't have to do anything, to apply any chemicals or do anything. But then I finally realized I just used glue stick. So I use it, just a simple glue stick. Uh, some things I don't need a glue stick at all. If they print a certain kind, it'll just go fine, life is good. But a lot of things that might be have little tinier pieces on there, I hit it with a little bit of a glue stick and it adheres just fine. I have like pretty much zero problems. And the nice thing with these new glue sticks, they um, this one is purple. And so it dries out and disappears. And then if I want to go clean the whole thing, I just wash it with water and it all comes back purple so I know which parts to clean off. And also, I don't have, I don't clean it off every time. I kind of leave it goopy. And I'll clean it off once every week or two. So this one, I decided not to adhere too well because I did put a little sticky stuff on it. So I put a little sticky stuff on it. Doesn't it almost become like seasoned? <laughs> after after a while, yeah, it becomes a little seasoned. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, this is a lot. Uh, I think it'd be good, but it's, yeah, this is this is fun. I thought it's kind of better. Than I thought it would be doing this. Do you have a mic on, or do they hear me too? Yeah, they hear you. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> 
Because it's just um, what the YouTube has set up is you can easily do a stream. I'm learning the streaming stuff. So on YouTube, you can push a button and start a stream. Uh, but the software, what they have set up, can easily just say, hit your camera. But if I want to do something more complex, like, you know what, I keep forgetting it because I'm doing a video overlay. Yeah. Go to Q-Sticks. We hear you. Uh-oh. So I have this other software <laughs> going on that's creating this video overlay so that I can move us. That's okay. I kind of forgot that we were there. Okay. See, the idea is if I'm, if I'm doing a video and I present, I, I prep it after the fact, I think it's a good thing to see people's reactions, so I always have my, my face over things. Um, but I'd make it small and out of the way so it's not in the way. Luckily, right now, I kind of forgot where I put it, <laughs> and I'm not paying much attention. Luckily, where my face is, I'm out of the way. Uh, but if I put it like right in front of my code, that would be, you know, if I come over here and stick myself right in front of the code and make this big, that's just, people can't read anything. That's stupid. Um, I forgot where I'm at. But luckily, I can be in a good spot, so I'm over here, out of the way. But if I do something behind us, then they can't see it. Don't forget to model the taco hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have it? Oh, you're still working no, on it? I'm still working on it, so we'll get it done. But if I seriously want to make a taco holder video, I should remake another video because interacting with you guys is a total waste of time, but it's fun. Um, it's not a waste, no, should, a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. It just slows me down, but it's fun talking to people. Okay, so uh, on the second point, so now we're doing... Oswald says, sorry to hijack everything. No, that's fine. It's more, sometimes it's nice to take some, this is nice, I can see this being more, I'll do more of these, because it's nice to talk back and forth with a couple people, and they might bring up some stuff, like he brought, brought up this thing called block S code, which might be, I have to go look it up. So sometimes, um, I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan, I see Dave Ramsey quotes this other guy called, oh, what's his name? Charlie Tremendous Jones, I think is his name. And he basically says, you'll be the same person you are a year from now, except for the people you meet in the books you read. And so that's very true. Some people... I meet lots of people. You do meet lots of people, but they bring up stuff. Like, I don't read many books. Block S code could be like, the thing that changes my life, just because someone told me about it. Uh, and Open S code, I think Osley was the one who said something about Open S code a while ago. Or maybe I did something. Yeah, that's a good quote. What are you printing? Uh, I'm just printing out, I'm using up the last of this film and I'm printing out little carabiners for mm. the conference. Yeah, Dave Ramsey's the financial guy. He, uh, I just do a show a lot. He's a real interesting guy. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. And he, and he, if you want, uh, he, he referenced a lot of really good books and good people. And so that's a good quote from somebody else that he quotes. He likes to quote a lot of good people. A lot of good books. Um, but yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so we've got that point. Now we're going down to this point. So that point is going to be the height. It's going to be that minus uh, the width bottom. The width bottom. Boom. Oh, now she's ninja in a way. I don't know if I've ever been told I'm ninja. Um, yeah, my wife's not much of a ninja. My wife's rather tall. Um, it doesn't come through on the camera because she's doing that. My wife is six foot three, so there's not a whole lot of ninja in on her family. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm reading from Osloy now. Osloy talking about the block S can. It has the benefits of no installation. It runs in the browser. Oh, that would be, yeah, that'd be nice for a class then, wouldn't it? I like that. Uh, Oslo has mentioned, I haven't looked it up yet, but Oslo has mentioned in this block SCAD, which is similar to open SCAD, I guess, but it seems to be much more simple. I'm guessing it's like maybe more tinker toyish, I guess, or something to teach younger kids. I haven't looked at it yet, but it seems like an interesting idea. Okay, so now let me rerun this. Oh, I got a bit of code. There we go. See, I got another problem. And see, it's saying it's on this line, but it's actually right here. I forgot to put my comma. There we go. Also on the iPads. Ooh, that'd be nice. There we go. So now we can see over here, this is working pretty well so far. So I have a 
Get a little bigger here. Where does my window set up again? Crazy. So we have the point up here, over here, and then down here. Let me save this while I'm here so I don't lose it. I'll say a taco. Hunter. Boom. So I got that point, that point, that point. And then I want to come over here and make this midway point. And so the midway point should just be the full length. That should be pretty easy. So I'll come down here and I'll make another line. And sometimes I do like doing this where I, I'll put all this in here so I don't forget. <laughs> so I'll say uh, width, full, and thickness. Boom. And then run that again. And now you see we get a little funny line because it's going over here. I could teach middle schoolers once on OpenSK and it didn't go over too well. Yeah, I think you'd want to, middle schoolers, you'd want to do something really simple. And also, you probably want to, I don't know, my wife could probably speak better to middle schoolers. You'd almost want to make, hey, this is a, I don't know if I teach the whole class, but here's the people who really, who are more, I almost make like an app, I don't know. A subgroup of more geeky people who want to focus on it because it's trying to maybe teach a whole class. Maybe it's a little hard. Uh, oh, here's but here's the hard thing. What do you want if you're going to teach a whole class? If you need to make something interesting, it, and if you can make something interesting that they can also print out, that makes them a little more focused. Like I don't know if it was the best thing to do, but I have I have a 3D snowman that I made, which is interesting and it prints out really well. And I did a video. I have a video on it somewhere. And I think that. It might be, at least it's something you can print, so they have something to walk away with. That checks out. Hmm. Well, and sometimes it's that 5 and 20 kid who changes the world, right? Or, you know, it, sometimes if you're going to teach a big class like that and they don't have any, necessarily have any interest, you don't know if they have interest or not. So how do you expose everyone a little bit with something simple that they can get done in a classroom and then some of them will be like yeah i don't care about this but there's some who will a little three-piece puzzle yeah i like that i also did a puzzle a puzzle would be a good one yeah they can put it together um but but all of it a big motivator would be to be able to 3d print something so if you had a bunch of 3d printers that you knew after the class that they could go print it out Half of them may not even bother printing it out, but it's definitely way cooler. Okay, next next point down here, and so I'll do the next one. The next one should be uh, the full width, and then zero because it's touching the bottom, right? So now we'll see that pop down. There we go. Link to three puzzles. Oh yeah, put a link. Give it a link to it. Yeah. Um. And then we come back and we get this point. So this point should be, won't be perfect on this. I'll say full width minus this bottom width and then minus the thickness. That should work. So we'll say width full minus uh, the width bottom minus the thickness and a zero. Boom. And of course, you can't see that one because it perfectly, perfectly lines up. So that point is actually there, you just can't see it. So I need to go get the next point so we can actually really see it. And that would be that one. And so that would be, I'm going to do, 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 do. And the pull this over to make it a little more readable. So we'll say, what is that? We have that little bit. So we know it's going to be that minus that. So be that. Okay, same thing. So we say it's going to be width, width full minus width bottom. Uh, not bottom, minus top, sorry, minus width to top. Oh, and also an example for this, like, since I'm trying to teach a class like this, like, normally if I was coding, I probably wouldn't say width underscore full. 
I probably say WF or something like that. It's a little bit easier to type, and I understand what's going on. But for a class for this, it's really I'm unable to connect to chat. Did I break something? Hi, chat. Cool. Okay, my to my uh, testing. Testing in the chat. Well, it looks like I can chat. Yeah. Let's see if the chat keeps popping through. I might have broken my chat. Boom, boom, boom. Now we're trying to refresh this. Okay, there we go. Works for me. Okay, I just had to reload my page here. I'm on the YouTube. It's just, for some reason, it said, hey, chat's not working. But now it is. Okay. Okay, so we got that. So that should be over there. And then we have the full height. Minus the thickness. Height minus thickness. Boom. See, it's looking more like my taco holder now. Okay, cool. And then the last thing we have is this one up here, which would be the height. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. So that is. Uh, it is zero, yeah, it's at the zero, and it's at the height minus thickness. Boom. And now, so that might seem a little cumbersome at first to get that all done, but now that I have it, it's easy to tweak it. So I'm not, I still need to do more to get the taco done, but just as an example here, if I go, you know what, the height's horrible, I don't like it, you know, I want to make it 80, it turns out it's better. I just hit the tension to 80 and it redoes it. You know, it turns out the thickness is bad, I want it to be 5. You know, make the thickness like that. And it's really easy to, do to change the code after the fact. <laughs> and I'm out, nice. Okay, so now I've got this. And I believe probably the answer to do this is to make one taco thing, and there should be something to mirror it. So I have this thing, this polygon, and I want to mirror it. So I'm pretty sure there should be some kind of cheat sheet for mirroring. Let's see if I can find, oh, and there it is, mirror. Boom, right there, mirror. And so we're only to mirror, uh, we don't need to mirror in a Z, Ah, and there's the fun thing. So if we, this is, this will be fun. So if I if I just still if I slowly do it like this, so I'll say mirror, and I don't have to do this, but I like putting a couple of spaces in here to kind of tell this that this is part, this is within this. So I'll say mirror. Um, I just want to mirror it along the x-axis, uh, the y-axis. I think I think I just need to do that. So I only want to mirror. Like a straight line. And so I'll say, hey, there's the curly bracket, and then over here I'll say I'm done with the curly bracket. I'll just erase this old guy. And let's see how that what that does. Oh, wrong one. How about I do that one? Okay, and see, yeah, so there we go. That worked perfectly. So now if I but the funny thing is I lost another one. So there's that. I want to mirror it, which that is the mirror of it, but it's mirroring it right on that line. I actually want to mirror it. Oh, because I want to mirror it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I want to mirror it and I want to shift it over. So you can do, 
calculations on that. So yeah, so you want to mirror it and then translate it. But also you can make this an object. You get a name. Since I'm going to be repeating this a lot, I can say taco, I can say taco half. Taco half equals, I'll cut and paste this away for now. I'll just take that out. Do, let's see if I make sure I'm doing this right. So I'll say taco half equals all this fun stuff, right? So now that is my taco half. Now if I do that, if I'm thinking correctly, uh, this taco half is now a variable. So now if I run this, I've defined what it is, but I haven't told it to draw it yet. So if I run this, it goes, nothing to draw. Uh, and I want to draw something, so I should be able to go down here and get my brain in gear on this. Um, do I have an example of doing this? Do I just do that? No, no, because you have to... It's always nice having an example code so you look through stuff and see what you did before. Okay, what did I make a because you make a variable, you draw it, and I'm being silly about that. Yeah. I ever even, I don't think I ever I did a bunch of variables, I ever just do a variable as a shape. Yeah, you can run the module. I guess never, this is funny, I don't think I've ever just made a shape. I made modules. Yeah, let's just go ahead, because because I've done that, I'll go make a module. Ah, a little embarrassing. When you're not prepped, right? Live TV. Let's see if I got something a little more interesting, like this guy. He's interesting. Do I have anything to well define here? No, I did that all in one go, didn't I? All right. Let's see what I have. Three prints I have. I think I did nice modules in when I did my snowman. I hope I did. Uh, what are you spelling? Oh, there you are, snowman. Did a couple of snowmen. Nope, I did not. Okay. Uh, this is the fun of going back and forth with your brain. Yeah, I'm thinking, I don't think I've done it with a variable. Can you do it with a variable? Now I got myself interested. Can I do it with a variable? I got my windows acting up now. Come on, please. You would think you could set a variable shape and then just draw it. Right. Sometimes you learn new things by doing it for somebody and you're like, I'm not sure. Okay, so can I make a variable shape? Now let me see. You know, let me look, let's just look that up because is there like a like a draw function? Um, it's a variable. I mean, you could pass stuff in as a model, duh. But can you just say, hey, I want to shape, I want to save it, and draw it out? This kind of variable. Okay, just set it to function. There's a module. Bum, bum, bum.
I just call it a function. Uh, well, that's passing in variables. That's, that's just a not, yeah, that's just a function. Yeah, I think you're right. I just want to do a module, so I'm just. You would think you could make. That's not the language, I guess you really can't. Uh, All right, we'll just do module. Okay, so from here we'll make a module and we'll call it taco half. And we're not going to pass anything in. Yeah. So I'll say taco half. And here's where, here's where we're getting like coding, right? So we can. If my memory is serving me right right now, it's fun when you work on different coding. So we just make this little bit of code, which is kind of like a repeatable piece, so we can reuse it again and again. So we're saying, hey, this this module function, um, if you run it, if you utilize it, it's going to do this. It's going to draw this polygon. Um, also, you could pass in variables. In this case, yeah, to do it right, we should. I don't want to teach in this class. So I could I could pass in variables. I could pass in height and different things and apply it. But also these at the level they're at, they should be applied universally unless they're being overwritten. In this case, we'll just leave we'll leave this at a, so this height module, this height number will be obtained from here, and that's okay. Um, but since we can, we did this, we can reuse it. And so that's probably a good thing to um, to know. So now if I do that. Am I brain thinking correctly? Boom, oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys. Yeah, doing what, so this is a cool thing where you can teach a lot of people good programming basics. Like, as far as you want to take the first two years of programming, I think there's more than enough stuff in OpenSCAD to do that. You know, variables, modules, uh, global variables, local variables. I don't want to confuse everyone about those who don't understand those. Um, High-end programming stuff, a lot more higher-end languages, that's not available here. But you can definitely use this to teach the basic concepts of the first couple of years of programming for most people, uh, for students. And then also, at the end of the day, they can print something physically out, and that's really cool. Okay, so I did that because now that I have a module, I want to reuse it. Because from my taco holder idea, I've got a bunch of these lined up, boom, boom, boom. So even even mirrored. So the first one is two, and then I want to put them together and make a, a mirror. So I'll come over here, and I can say, so there's a taco half, and I can make another taco half. Now if I do this, technically it's drawing two taco halves, but they're actually in the same exact location, so you don't see any difference. But now I can take one, leave it as is, and I can take the other one and mirror it. And because when you mirror something, it will make the mirror, but it's not going to leave the old one. So you have to, I have to draw, draw the original one and then draw the mirrored version too. So you have to draw it twice. It's not going to draw it and then make the mirror. Like in Fusion 360, you draw something and then you mirror it, and it leaves the original one there. So it's a little different concept. Well, let's see what I do. There we go. Um, but now, see this mirror mirrored along that line. Uh, so I have it mirrored in the correct shape, but I want to shift it over. Uh, and so I think I could move the mirror line. I have to think about that. But in this case, I'm going to make it a little simpler and do a translate. Because what I want to do is I want to, I'll draw it as is, and I want to shift it over. And I can shift it over based on the math. So I can say translate, which, let me go back over here. Uh, in my cheat sheet, there should be translate, transformations. And so I'll click on this translate. And you can use this to shift things. And so you can shift things in X, Y, and Z. So you can move it in all three dimensional spaces if you want. 
In this case, I just want to move it in the one. And why are my windows? My windows are being buttheads right now. And so we'll wrap this thing around that. Now you don't have to, but I like to put a couple of spaces in here to indicate that who is being applied to what. And so we'll translate it, and we have to translate like a point, right? Yep. And so again, we have boom, boom. We have x, y, z. And so, so we can fiddle with those. And so in this case, we should want to translate it in the x. In fact, I'll just do I'll do a number just to make sure I'm thinking correctly. Yep, so that moved it in the right direction. You saw it kind of shift over there. In fact, let me do a more extreme number. You saw it shift over. Um, a mirrored module. Oh, a mirrored module. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. That's a good idea. You could make a mirrored module, which is what I'm about to do. Um, the idea is, but yeah, you, you could make it just a, a, that's even a better idea where you make it, you could have a mirrored module that returns the mirror and it at the same time. Um, I'm going to make not merely a mirrored module. I'm going to make, I'm going to turn this into a module to say, give me a taco and it'll give me both together in the position I want. Because uh, as I translate this, this little guy down here needs to match over here. And so he needs to be the full width over. So width full, I'll copy that, paste that here. And now it should totally not line up. What did I do? I have width full, which is 36. Uh, why not line up? A 236 on my X. Because you're mirrored over there. So I gotta do, t oh, I gotta double it. Oh, I gotta double it. Okay. Because it mirrored, it didn't mirror in the center and just flip it in position. It mirrored it way over, so I have to, I have to do width full times two. So I can say two times, boom, with full, and boom. Now I got my taco holder, a taco holder. Um, cool. And so now, since I want, like in my drawing, I talked about having multiple tacos. Who wants just one single taco holder? You want multiple. Uh, so I can tweak that. So I can make this a function, a module too. So I can say, module, so I call this one taco half, and so I can say, just call it taco, right? And all I gotta do is enclose this stuff. And again, you don't have to, but I like doing this so I know who belongs to what. It just makes life easier. Um, and now if I do this, and I render it, nothing's gonna happen because this is now part of a module and I'm not choosing it. So I run this, it'll just say, nothing to render. But I come down here and say taco with a semicolon. And now I get that back, even though technically you didn't see it disappear, but you saw there's an error there. But you could do mirror and half taco. Do mirror one zero zero half taco. Yeah, I could do a mirror. Is that what I'm doing? So with the above, you could. Oh, sorry, I was always, I was always saying something. So with the above, you could do mirrored one zero zero half taco. Then the taco module would be module taco mirrored one zero zero half taco. Okay, module taco mirrored one zero zero half taco. Oh, this is like a mirrored where it keeps it. Okay, I have to go look that up. That's fine to take a live stream. I'm wasting all my time anyway. <laughs> but it's fun. Okay, so now I got this taco, but I want multiple tacos, right? So now I come up here and say uh, number of taco, number of tacos equals, we'll say three. And we'll just have these line up, right? And so I'll come down here and say module. Uh, tacos, right? And, well, we won't send a variable. We'll, we'll keep the 
I don't have a local variable there. And so we'll come down here and we'll uh, put that there. So we'll say tacos. Well, nah, I don't like that. Okay, let me take that away. Mm, I'll, I'll leave that there for convenience sake. So I'm not going to use this as a... Um, I'll, I'll leave that there for convenience sake because I can put it... No, I can just... No, no, no. Here, I'll, I'll put it up here. I'll do this. Well, is that going to yell at me? I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Let me see. Cause it, some languages, I haven't thought about the language on those. Some languages are so simple in their rendering that if you try to call something before defining it, it'll freak out. Uh, I don't know if that's the case here. So I'll say tacos. I'm going to make a module with tacos, pass number three. And right now, I'll say num tacos, um, just to see if that works. It might yell at me now. No, it didn't. Okay, cool. Yeah, you should define a value before using it, but I don't, you're not a module. So I think we're, that seemed to work, right? So I have tacos three, that seems it was happy with that. That way, one thing I like to do for a simple class is you have all these modules, which can be confusing to go through, but if you make all these variables at the top, then it's easy. I have one nice location where I can change all of my numbers. I don't have to go down and I don't have to go down in the weeds and fiddle with something. It's like, here's all the numbers that help me define how many tacos I want. So they're all up here in one section to fiddle with. Uh, I especially like doing that if I'm making the code to hand off to somebody else. Like if I'm making some code and I want to stick it up on Thingiverse or something, then here's all the variables up at the top. If you want to know all the rest of it, fine. But just here's some nice ones you can tweak at the top and not worry about what's going on below, unless you want to go in the weeds. Okay, so here we have tacos, and now we want to do multiple tacos. So now we have to do a loop. So, uh, when's the last time I did a loop? Do I have any loops? Because we can do four loops in there, right? If my brain is thinking correctly. Do I have any four loops? We got halves. Four. Yeah, too many languages in my brain. Yeah, there we go. Four. There we go. Flow control. There we go. You have four loops. Do, do, do. Oh, we can do it for a while. We can do that. Start and that's probably easy enough. I don't really need it. I'm going to just do a four, start and end. We don't need that. And copy and paste that. So just to make sure I'm thinking correctly on my four loops. So we'll have here, well, we don't really care about the variable, but we'll say uh, zero. We'll start at one. And then num tacos, whatever it's passed in. And one nice thing you can do in here is you can echo stuff out. Which this is this is gonna just echo text out. So it'll echo, echo it should echo out one, two, three, and it echoes it out over here. So it's nice to do a little testing. And there we go, one, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. So I'll go over here, and so now I can use, I just want to test to make sure my for loop was correct, correct in my thinking. So I can say for. I can do a variable here, but I don't really care about the variables, but I will just for now. Um, I'll say one, two, number tacos. And so for those who don't code, uh, what this is going to do is it's going to do a loop. And so what it does, it says, hey, for, I'm going to set, I can use this as a variable if I want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to make up this number, A. And it's, it's going to be one at, at first. It'll be one, and it'll, I'll set this number as one just because that's neat. I have this a variable equals one because maybe I want that. And then what I'll do is I'll run everything in between these curly brackets. I'll run taco. It'll make a taco. Um, but then what it'll do, it'll come back again and say, hey, a equals one, but now I add one to it, so now it's two. Um, 
and it looks this num tacos. What's that number? Am I still less than that number? If I'm still less than that number, cool, I'll run again, but now I equal two. And then it comes around again, increments again. So now a equals three. It says, hey, uh, num tacos is three, cool, that's three. Uh, I guess this is, yeah, this is three, so I'll run again. Then I come through again, I'm four, now I'm four, is four less than three? Uh, or and four is greater than three, so now I can't run, so I stop and, I, and I'm done. So now if I run this, it's technically going to run taco three times, but right now it's going to render them in the same shape, so really I didn't get any value out of that yet. So I'll say render. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I rendered it technically three times, but I want to, every single time I come through, I want to move it over. So I can use that translate command, right? And I'll do that so it's like that. Boom, boom, zero, 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 which technically, again, doesn't do anything. Okay, so with all that joy. So now I want to move it over. And so I need to move it over uh, that half width times two. So, um, yeah. So I'll take this whole taco as is, and I should move it over. Yeah, so, but I need to do that. I need to multiply that number. So every single time that A increments, I need to move it two more over. So the first time it is a zero, it is a one, and I don't want to move it over. So I can say A minus one times that. So the first time A equals one, so one minus one is zero. It doesn't do anything. The next time it is one, and so it moves over that full width. The next time it's two, I mean three, three minus one is, so it moves over again. So this, I think should have me done. And there we go. So now I've got my multiple taco holders, which I can see that I'm probably going to adjust some of these widths on this. But in general, it's working. Let me refresh my screen here. I think I might be losing some comments. Okay, cool. Okay, so now, I can, see, I can see I'm probably going to fiddle with these, but let me do the last bit before I start fiddling. So now I need to extrude them. So I have these tacos, which I call up here. Hey, making... This is where, if I didn't have this, nothing would be rendered. So this says, hey, make three tacos. Make four tacos. Make two tacos. And it runs that module and gets that job done. But also as part of that module, I need to extrude it linearly. So I need to, um, I got the, uh, what do I want to call that? I need to make another variable on how wide I want to make this, but I'm already, already using the variable width and height and all that fun stuff. So I'll say, uh, I'll just call it length because the length of, the, of that guy. And so first, pull this out so I get an idea. Yeah, let's start with 80. 80 seems like a good number to start with. And some of this you might not know until you print it out. So I'll say 80, and I'll use that link down here. And so we're making the tacos. And so if we're here, in this module, it's making the taco, making the taco, making the taco. So over here, I can do a linear, a linear extrude, which let me go pull up the module for us. So in here, you should be able to do a linear extrude, which is a 3D thing. I'll click on that. And all, all that is, is you can think of it perfect. They got a picture. It's like Play-Doh. It's taking that shape and just pulling it out. And so I can do a linear extrude. And there's a bunch of fun stuff you can do with it, where you can twist and do all this stuff. And I am not doing that. All I want to do is a height. So I think I just need one number. Yeah. 
Okay, so so let me go back over here and do a linear linear extrude, and we'll say Tim. Uh, I have an example of an extrude. Let me see. What do I do? Linear extrude. Yeah, just one number. It knows where to go. Linear extrude. Oh, and that that could be a problem when you're thinking if you're trying to do some stuff in three dimensions here. I'm not going to go into depth on that, but if you try to extrude, if I recall correctly, it only extrudes in one way. And so if you want to extrude the other way, in that other plane, what you would do is you extrude, and then there's ways where you can flip something over. I, th I think I'm right on that. So I'll come down here and say length, put a quote there, a semicolon there, and then I curly bracket. And then for me, I like doing this because it makes it easier in my brain. So now this is going to linear extrude everything that's created within these, and three tacos are created within, well, right now it's three, but I can say whatever I want. And boom, there is my taco holder. I got something funky going off my mouse right now. It's not liking me. Uh, and so for simplicity's sake, because I'm going to go print some of these, sometimes it's nicer to start smaller and then see where you're, where you're at. So like I think that 80 length might be it might be a good length. I don't know. But I'm going to drop it down to 20. I think the 20 is way too short. Or even 10. Uh, well, maybe 40. I'll do 40 because I might have a little bit of length to that as I test it. Uh, yep, there you go. Depth. Yep, rotate. I was always talking about the rotate. Okay. And so now there I've got my taco. But you can see some of the things are, maybe I don't like that. Uh, so I, I can tweak some of the numbers. You know, one thing I'm not liking right now is this right here. That seems like way too big a gap. But I do like the little bits on the end. So if you're going to do, squish them together, what would you do? You could, you could do a variable. You'd have to do it. Yeah, you could do that. What you would do, like let's say I want to, I don't want necessarily this to be that wide. Let's say I want this to be this wide, right? We have that top variable, which is the width top, right? And so right now, this appears two times. No, there's the, no, the width top is right here, sorry. There's a width full minus the width. So this is, that right there is the full width minus the width top times two. And I just want to divide that in half. So I can take, because we can do some fun math. So I can say, when you move that over, when you translate it, I don't want it to be, I want it to be the full width, fantastic, move yourself over. But then I also want to be able to subtract a little bit. So what I want to do is say, hey, fine, you move that over, and then I want to adjust a little bit. And I'll use the A minus, no, I wanted to use that. Uh, no, this would work because it would. Ah, now I got my my brain thinking. So we have the we have the width full minus the width top divided by two. So I'm trying to think how it's going to be applied to every single one. Sometimes it's so quick to run it, so you just run it, see what happens. Uh, boom, boom. Oh, another thing to note, if you're doing coding like you're doing brackets in here, um, some of us are used to order operations. You're doing math, you're doing a bracket. So if you're not used to coding, that matters too. So you can see it'll highlight, sometimes if you're on a bracket, It'll highlight it's, it's matching other brackets. That's really convenient. So this bracket matches that bracket. Okay, so I just moved it all over. I don't want to do that. So that technically moves it all over, which would work, but I don't want to move the first one. I move the second one, then we want afterwards. But I want to move it in increasing increments. Ah, that's true. I think I might have it. So I want to say a minus one multiply. I think that works. Yes, make two, four tacos. Boom, hey, I got my math right. Sweet. 
Or if you want to do some math consolidation, uh, this a minus 1 times that, I don't, they're both a minus 1, so I can uh, do that and simplify, right? That should be the same thing. If I can learn how to do the right curly brackets. Yeah, that one was matching. Let's see. Bring that one. Bolt. All right. No, nope, I got one too many brackets. Okay, that. 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 What did I set? I had to mention closing round bracket just before the comma. No, so that's that. That matches that one. That's the full translate. No, that's the full translate. That's right. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So now I typified it. Life is good. We'll check it now. Put down to two. Boom. Good. I like that better. And so that's a little bit more what I was looking for. So there we go. There's my code in all its glory. And so now I'll go. I may remake this video because it's been fun chatting with you guys, but I can imagine how long we've gone and trying to watch that video might be. It might be fun. I don't know. Maybe it's fun watching a video with people chatting back and forth. Actually, it kind of is because I do that too. Um, but for a class, maybe it might be better to make another or second video to get to the point. Um, but you know, sometimes it's fun watching someone go through a creative process. Uh, it's nice to have a class presented, um, but I'm, I understand more and more as I get older, some of the professors would walk into class and they wouldn't know exactly what they're doing, but they would sit there and they could get they could figure it out because they knew so much they'd go around and write all this stuff and you you see their thinking process, which is nice. Um, it's nice to see some people's thinking process, especially in a group like this, people are talking back and forth. Cool. Okay, so now I'll go render this, and I'll put some tacos in there, and I'll see what adjustments I need to make, because maybe it turns out my bottom width, which is right here, needs to be, and this bottom width is technically half that bottom width, and so maybe I want to make that bigger. And that would be obnoxious, right? <laughs> okay, that'd be too big. Uh, but if I adjust that, I gotta adjust the other one, right? Yeah, pair programming. Uh -huh. uh, there's also mob programming. Sometimes you're trying to get an idea through, and people like you guys, you guys paired with me today. There were some things where, like, oh yeah, I forgot to put a comma or this, and you guys noticed it, or you suggested this or that, or we, you guys looked at me funny when I thought I could turn it to a variable and I couldn't. So it's kind of nice to. Um, yeah. Maybe you model a taco up. <laughs> Put a taco in there. Yeah, you could model a, a taco. That'd be a fun one. Uh, yeah, that'd be a simple, that'd be an interesting shape because you could do like a semicircle, extrude it, and then you got to move the whole thing at an angle. And then put it in there. And so you could kind of, you could mock something up, uh, which, you know, is helpful. Like if you were really serious about nailing this the first time, or being better about nailing the first time, it might be it'd be a good idea to go look at a taco, get the dimensions, and then mock up a taco, and then move the taco around and kind of get an idea uh, where it is. Which in like in Fusion 360, that'd be really easy because then you could move it move it more easily and fiddle with it. Um, I'm not going to model a taco tonight, but it'd be a cool idea. Uh, <laughs> But, okay, so I think it's probably getting close to dinner time for me here. Uh, so I might be wrapping this up. I'll probably uh, go print this out tonight. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video to show what's going out there. Uh, probably, I can probably, well, you know what? I wish I could attach this code. I think one time I tried to go throw code on. You know, I'll, here's what I'll do. I'll, I don't know if I can update, can I update, update stuff live? Here, I'll do it right now. How about this? I'll, I'll do this for the show and put it in the in the chat, and then I'll go update the show notes after the fact, I hope. So, uh, no, 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 not that one. 
Let's go to github.com. Uh, for those of you familiar with GitHub, uh, there we go, sign in. I guess I haven't signed into GitHub in a while. See if I can remember my password. Uh, oh, you sent me. Uh, I guess I haven't been on there in a while. Let's go ahead and verification. So I'm doing this all off screen because you don't need to see all my arm and stuff. Uh, there we go. I guess we're doing verification coding now. Okay, so uh, for those who may, many people here may not be familiar, I'm guessing Oslo might, is github.com is a place, not unlike Thingiverse, where you can upload, and at github.com you can upload your code. <laughs> That's why I type funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, talking about keyboard now. When I when I do passwords and stuff, I'm doing different passwords. Not only I'm doing it off screen, but I'm doing different things to actually fool the noises and doing it softly and different things. So in theory, someone could because a lot of mics are um, left and right, you could, in theory, and some people have kind of done this as proof of concept. You could hear where you could co-locate, you could figure out where the key would be impressed. Very difficult in practice, but also I try to avoid stupid, I try to just avoid all that completely. So like here I did, I did some things, I'm paranoid. So I did a couple of things to make sure that couldn't happen. Also, whenever I do videos where I may have typed a password, I actually go cut out the entire audio, even beyond what I, the stuff I normally do, because just in case. Or yeah, you can even hear how many key presses. And, yeah. Always be careful with your stuff. And a lot of people on YouTube are just like, oh yeah, type in. And like you see, even even seeing how many letters are in their password is not good. Okay, so we have this, and I will go. Okay, anyway, GitHub place where you can upload stuff. So there's a lot of things you can do in here. And man, everything's acting wonky on me today. Uh, now this is so simple, I'm not going to really make a repository or anything for it. They have gists, so you want to get the gist of something. So a gist is a place where you can throw up a little piece of code without making a repository. And I've done a lot of those in the past. Um, so I will go make one here, and I'll link it in the show, and link it here, and we'll just throw this code up here so anyone can grab it and fiddle with it. So it has been a while. So I am in here, and I'm in my gist, and I can say, you want me to add a gist? Yeah, there we go. So we will call this uh, open SCAD taco holder. And we'll go back over here, select all that. Boom. And create a public gist. Give it to. And there we go. And there it is. And I should be able to post this. Boom. You press it, it's not different. Press the B. Yep. Always be careful. And I'll always have different passwords, different things. Anyway, there's the code. We're calling it good. I will. Why did I close that? Not the brightest job. Um, anyway, I will. There it is in the chat. And I should go post it in this video, I guess, after the fact. So, hey. Anyway. First stream that I've ever done on YouTube, and I would call it a success. And I'm gonna go print. Oh, oh, almost straight last thing. So now that you have this, we have to actually push the STL button. So you click the STL button, and now uh, it'll download it. So I'll just call it Taco Holder, save it. There. So now I have a Taco Holder. I'll pull it in my slicer, and I'll go prep it and slice it up. So. Um, there you go. But also, always make sure you re-render it before you hit the STL, because the STL will always capture what was rendered. So like, I can go here and type in 4, and if I hit, hit the STL button, it's going to show me what was rendered. And it says, hey, it's been modified. Do you want to export this? If I say yes, it's, it's not going to give me the 4 version. It'll give me what, what I see. 
So it's good to know that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, guys. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, that's a good point. I guess I, I didn't tweet this. This is my first time trying this. Maybe I should send a tweet out beforehand. Um, but also let people know, um, as I definitely for when I when I get the Prusa Mini, and again, I don't know when that's coming, I'll probably try to do that several hours out. So I think in YouTube I can post it and say, hey, this video will start at 5, and you can see that. So it'll be a couple hours out to be... Um, Oh, Lightspeed tweeted it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he mentioned that before, so thanks for that. Okay. Um, but maybe next time I'll do a little bit better and plan out, like, give it some more time. Or maybe this was fun. Maybe I can schedule some time every week or two just to do a live video and see how it goes. Yeah. And, oh, man, I hope that person in November, early December. I'm hoping in November because that would be nicer. But, you know, I got in there the first day, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think he's saying, that's what he's saying. I think worst case, if you got there the first day or two, you probably get it before Christmas. Oh, thanks. Hey, thanks. Greg's Maker's Corner. Honestly, this was a good live stream. He has any others I have been on. Nice job. Yay. Okay, cool. As always, participate. If I'm, I think we did a good job here tonight where people were saying, hey, you forgot this, I forgot that. So it's nice to correct me as I'm doing things. Oh, you order within two hours. So you beat me. You're probably gonna get it first. I almost the minute I saw. I don't. I don't think I was that quick. But the minute I saw it, I checked it out. I was like, "Oh, cool! I'm gonna get this." Because I was planning on getting a Prusa i3 Mark III in the near future. But then that came up. I'm like, "Cool! I'm getting that." But then my wife was out, and I don't like to make. We we tend to not make any purchases over a couple hundred bucks without talking to each other. She was all for it, but she happened to be out of the house. I'm like, "Ah, I'll wait till she gets back." So. I may have cost myself a couple of days by waiting a couple of hours for to get home, but that's okay. We'll get it. Cool. Okay, then I'm going to push the button and end the stream because this is a lot of fun. But I need to go eat dinner. <laughs> we'll talk to all you guys. We'll see you the next time I do this. So, a lot of fun. I had a good time.